Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. Well, friends, it turns out that AI coding is not just for the vibe coders. At Meta's LlamaCon event, which will be the topic of our main episode today, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella made a crossover appearance in a fireside chat with Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg. One of the more interesting topics was the takeover of AI code in big tech. Nadella said that between 20 and 30% of the code in Microsoft's repositories was generated by AI. In other words, he's saying that this is not just a significant portion of the new code being written, but that AI-generated code is now a big part of the overall code base. He also got a little detailed, which was interesting. He mentioned that the company was seeing mixed results across different languages, with the strongest performance in Python and less progress being made with C++. Throwing the question back at Zuck, the Meta CEO said that he didn't know how much of the company's code was being generated by AI, but aims for it to get to 50% by the end of next year. You might remember that late last year, Google CEO Sundar Pichai said that his company was using AI to generate 25% of their code, but earlier this month, he actually updated that, stating that it's now, quote, well over 30%. Next up today, OpenAI has apparently fixed GPT-40's personality, or at least attempted to, to make it less sycophantic. As we discussed on Monday's show, the personality of the default chat GPT model went haywire over the weekend, leading it to agree with basically everything and overly compliment the user. We talked about all the various ways that was bad, so check out that episode if you haven't heard it yet. But in any case, yesterday Sam Altman posted, We started rolling back the latest update to GPT-40 last night. It's now 100% rolled back for free users and will update again when it's finished for paid users, hopefully later today. We're working on additional fixes to model personality and we'll share more in the coming days. The company also published a post-mortem blog explaining, When shaping model behavior, we start with baseline principles and instructions outlined in our model spec. We also teach our models how to apply these principles by incorporating user signals like thumbs up, thumbs down feedback on ChatGPT responses. However, in this update, we focused too much on short-term feedback and did not fully account for how users' interactions with ChatGPT evolve over time. As a result, GPT-40 skewed towards responses that were overly supportive but disingenuous. OpenAI model designer Ada McLaughlin had previously commented, We originally launched with a system message that had unintended behavior effects but found an antidote. Now, the post implied that most of the personality change was to do with a new system prompt rather than additional post training. Jailbreaker Penny the Liberator had, of course, found the hidden system prompt, giving us a look under the hood. The old malfunctioning prompt said, Over the course of the conversation, you adapt to the user's tone and preference, try to match the user's vibe, tone, and generally how they're speaking. The new prompt inserted on Monday read, Engage warmly yet honestly with the user. Be direct, avoid ungrounded or sycophantic flattery, maintain professionalism and grounded honesty that best represents OpenAI and its values. When asked if he believed that this would fix the problem, Pliny said, The full scope of the problem runs much deeper for sure. It's a silly fix, but probably does give like 10 to 20% improvement for that particular behavior. In their blog post, OpenAI committed to refining their training techniques and system prompts to steer away from sycophancy. But beyond that, we didn't get a ton of specifics. Overall, this is another reminder of how new and novel these technologies are and how little changes can make big differences. Lastly today, Duolingo is the latest company going AI first. In an all-hands email, CEO Louis von Ahn wrote, AI is already changing how work gets done. It's not a question of if or when, it's happening now. When there's a shift this big, the worst thing you can do is wait. In 2012, we bet big on mobile. While others were focused on mobile companion apps for websites, we decided to build mobile first because we saw it was the future. Betting on mobile made all the difference. We're making a similar call now, and at this time, the platform shift is AI. Von Ahn discussed how the company has already adopted AI to help automate their content production process, commenting, To teach well, we need to create a massive amount of content, and doing that manually doesn't scale. The company also recently introduced a video feature allowing users to chat with an AI avatar, a feature that, as the CEO pointed out, was impossible to build before. He continued, AI is not just a productivity boost. Being AI first means we'll need to rethink much of how we work. Making minor tweaks to systems designed for humans won't get us there. In many cases, we'll need to start from scratch. We're not going to rebuild everything overnight, and some things, like getting AI to understand our code base, will take time. However, we can't wait until the technology is 100% perfect. We'd rather move with urgency and take occasional small hits on quality than move slowly and miss the moment. Speaking to the practical changes at the company, Von Ahn wrote, We'll gradually stop using contractors to do work that AI can handle. AI use will be part of what we're looking for in hiring. AI use will be part of what we evaluate in performance reviews. Headcount will only be given if a team cannot automate more of their work. Most functions will have specific initiatives to fundamentally change how they work. Now, the memo did include a caveat that the company still, quote, deeply cares about its employees and will provide training, mentorship, and tooling to support the transition. 
It said that the initiative is about, quote, removing bottlenecks so we can do more with the outstanding employees we already have. We want you to focus on creative work and real problems, not repetitive tasks. Now, of course, the memo had clear echoes to the Shopify memo released earlier this month, which told the company that increased headcount would not be approved unless teams demonstrate that they cannot get what they want done using AI. AI advisor Ali K. Miller posted, First Shopify, now Duolingo. If you're a digital native business and haven't gotten the memo, here is the literal memo. Now, this is something we'll be talking about a lot more in the days to come, so I'll leave it there for now. But I think, and you will not be surprised that I think this, that this is the beginning of a trend. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode.